A wise anthropomorphic aardvark and his friends once said, Having fun isn't hard when you've got a library card. As a kid, I took that wisdom to heart and would spend hours reading the books I got from the library. I remember grinding through the Magic Treehouse books like my certificate for a personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut depended on it. However, as an adult, I have no clue where the library in my city is. Having fun is hard when you have no clue where to use your library card. Truthfully though, even if I did know where my local library was, I probably wouldn't go to it. I prefer to own the books I read, I like collecting them, and as I've gotten older, my taste in reading have shifted. I mostly read nonfiction now, and although I dabble in a lot of different genres, as a Christian, I really enjoy reading Christian books. That's a bit of an umbrella term, but in general, they're books written by Christians of different backgrounds that teach, encourage, or otherwise shed light on different issues, hopefully from a biblical perspective. A lot of cities used to have Christian bookstores where you could shop for these types of books to your heart's content, but a good chunk of them have closed in recent years, especially due to COVID. So if Christian bookstores are off the market and libraries aren't as cool as Arthur made them out to be, then where can I go to find the books I like? Well, the answer to that question is also the answer to where's the best place to take someone on a first date, and that's Barnes & Noble. Barnes & Noble has cemented itself as the book lover's paradise. With their lo-fi radio music, built-in Starbucks, and books as far as the eye can see, it's hard for me not to spend several hours there every time I visit. And among the sea of books at Barnes & Noble is the Christian section. Actually, it's just the religious section. I don't know if I'm falling victim to the Mandela effect, but I always remember it being labeled as the Christian section. Religious is more of an inclusive term, I guess, but for all intents and purposes, the specific area that I'm referring to is the Christian section, so that's what I'll be calling it. So it's great to still have a place to find the books I like, but what sort of books will you find in the Christian section of Barnes & Noble? If I'm a newcomer to the faith or someone just curious to see what sort of books Christians write, what will my impression of the faith be based off the shelves at Barnes & Noble? What are the odds that I'll find a book that actually does write by Jesus? It's not like Barnes & Noble is a Christian company, so they don't have any obligation or make any promises to only sell truly gospel-centered books in their Christian section. Thus, I've taken the responsibility upon myself to investigate the shelves of the Christian section at Barnes & Noble so Christians and non-Christians alike can know what to expect from it. Before we dive in, I'd like to clarify a few things. One, every book I show or mention in this video, I saw in person at Barnes & Noble. I'm sure there's a ton more options on the Barnes & Noble website, but my intentions with this video are to see what books you could just stumble upon at the physical store, so that's where these books were found. Two, these findings are based off the Christian section at my local Barnes & Noble. The stores come in all different shapes and sizes, so your mileage may vary with what books you find at your store. Three, how I've categorized these books is subjective. There will be overlap between categories. Some books will fit better in their respective categories than others. And if you disagree with my methods, then please at least be nice about it. And four, this is by no means a comprehensive categorization since there are thousands of books in the Christian section alone and I'm just one man. But hopefully by the end of the video, you'll at least have a good idea of what to expect. I've based most of the categories of books that we're going to be looking at off the authors who wrote them, so with that in mind, let's dive right in. The first big category of authors that I noticed right off the bat are the celebrities. Every celebrity and their mom are signing book deals these days, and the celebrities who are Christians are no different. Ranging from athletes to music artists to TV stars, celebrity authors take up a lot of real estate on the Christian section bookshelves. These books tend to be autobiographical where instead of walking the reader through a specific issue or discussing one specific topic, the authors just share their life stories and express how God has met them along the way. That's not the case for everyone, like Phil Robertson of Duck Dynasty fame. He has a few books on the Barnes & Noble shelves, some of which, like The Theft of America's Soul, address specific issues where he acts as a subject matter expert. But for the most part, the subject matter that celebrity authors are experts on as it relates to Christianity are their personal testimonies, so that's what they write about. Since the authors behind these books are friendly faces and their books tend to be more personable, they sell well and make for enjoyable, low-threat reading material. A subsection of this category that makes up its own denomination of celebrity authors by sheer volume is YouTubers. If it's cool and hip for traditional celebrities to write a book, then YouTubers have their own cool kids table because they are all writing books. Again, these books tend to just be made up of funny anecdotes and bite-sized pieces of wisdom, but there are still exceptions. Jefferson Bethke, the man behind the viral video Why I Hate Religion But Love Jesus, he has a few books at Barnes & Noble. One of them, the spiritual successor to his poem, titled Jesus is Greater Than Religion, breaks down the disconnect between the legalism that so many churches preach and the grace of Jesus that the Bible actually talks about. I've read it a few times, once with my small group, and I highly recommend it. 
In general, the effort that YouTubers put into their books varies greatly, so choosing to approach them just as ways of getting to know your favorite internet personalities better is probably your best course of action. The next group of authors that you would expect to find in the Christian section are big name pastors, who I've dichotomized based off generation. The first group consists of books written by the younger generation of pastors, made up of guys like Michael Todd, Judah Smith, Rich Wilkerson Jr., Levi Lusco, Stephen Furtick. Some people might know them as celebrity pastors. They're the ones you might see on the Preachers and Sneakers Instagram page. These guys tend to be controversial since their fame and clout make some people question where their hearts are at, but nevertheless, they all lead churches and they all have written books. These books range from more general themes like overcoming weakness and insecurity to more specific themes like how to live biblically in every stage of a romantic relationship. The common thread among them is how they're directed toward the younger generation of Christians. That doesn't mean they're exclusive to the younger generation, but the language and illustrations the pastors use in them are more relatable for millennials and Gen Zers. I don't personally agree with the idea of clout chasing pastors, but I have read some of their books and I have friends who have read these books, so I can say there's still a lot of biblical wisdom to take away from them. Just like with anything, I wouldn't recommend reading books only by these pastors, but if you dabble in some Judas Smith while also reading stuff by the older generation of pastors, you should be golden. Speaking of which, the next group of books are the ones authored by the older generation of big name pastors. This includes the likes of Tim Keller, Francis Chan, Max Lucado, and N.T. Wright. These pastors aren't immune to the spoils of fame, but generally they're not associated with popular culture like the younger generation of pastors are. So because of that, and just based off the fact that they're from an older generation in general, I differentiated them from the younger pastors. By virtue of being older and having had more time on earth to write books, these pastors have more books on the shelves at Barnes & Noble than their younger counterparts. A lot of these books are time-tested, which means they're less trendy and more acknowledged as staple pieces of Christian literature. The Meaning of Marriage by Tim Keller is one of the most popular premarital counseling books in the church. Simply Christian by N.T. Wright is one of the most renowned books on the Christian faith. And Francis Chan's Crazy Love helps readers return to biblical Christianity in a way that has had immense staying power. In my opinion, since these books have remained relevant in a world that's inundated with information, they're easier to recommend. I would have loved to have seen some other authors on the shelves like John Piper and J.D. Greer, but for people just wandering around the Christian section, these books would generally be good ones to pick out. The next group of books consists of the ones written by historical Christian figures. These are the pastors, theologians, apologists, and evangelicals who staked their claim in relatively recent church history and wrote a book or two along the way. They include Billy Graham, C.S. Lewis, A.W. Tozer, and Dietrich Bonhoeffer. Even more so than the last group of books, these books have stood the test of time and are therefore, generally, solid reading material. There can be a bit of a curve just as far as the language used in these books since they were written by men living in a different period than most of us, but the information is timeless. C.S. Lewis essentially has a whole shelf of his own, which does put a smile on my face. Between Mere Christianity, The Great Divorce, and The Screwtape Letters, you can't go wrong with his stuff. It may be tempting to write these books off as being irrelevant or out of touch with our lives today, but the wisdom shared in them is still super applicable and beneficial if you take the time to read it. The next group of books are the ones written by Word of Faith pastors. These include books by Joel Osteen, Joyce Meyer, T.D. Jakes, and others. The Word of Faith movement, otherwise known as the Prosperity Gospel, preaches that health, wealth, possessions, and success are the direct results of having enough faith in God. Material abundance is evidence of having a lot of faith, and poverty and health issues are evidence for a lack of faith. The movement focuses heavily on individuality and teaches that it's God's ultimate desire for you to be happy. And since money can buy happiness for a lot of people, you'll see Word of Faith pastors living in million dollar mansions, owning private jets, and also being featured on the Preachers and Sneakers Instagram page. For those who may not be familiar with the Bible, these teachings are unbiblical. Faith is definitely important, but trials and health issues don't result from a lack of faith. God does want you to be joyful, but he wants that joy to be found in him, not in earthly possessions. For these reasons, the books by these pastors can be dangerous, especially to people with a limited understanding of biblical teaching. Best case scenario, they read one of these books with a friend who is familiar with what the Bible teaches and together they can pick out the parts that are biblical and throw away the rest, but worst case scenario, they read one of these books and incorrectly build their understanding of the Christian faith around what these books say. Titles like Become a Better You, 7 Keys to Improving Your Life Every Day, and Power Thoughts, 12 Strategies to Win the Battle of the Mind, they sound appealing, but they make promises about enlightenment and prosperity that tempt people to look at themselves as the God of their life rather than look to Christ. Also, in my opinion, and this is just my opinion, but when a pastor plasters his or her face on the front of their book so that you have to look at it every time you open the book, 
it's a red flag. Just my two cents. Not every book by these pastors is complete heresy, but if the words they write in their books are the same words they preach in their television programs, then the wise advice with them would be to proceed with caution. The last group of books are the ones by authors who just want to make you feel good. These are your books by Bob Goff, Rachel Hollis, and everyone else who wants you to live your best life. Whether they're sharing personal anecdotes about how they overcame hardships, or giving you a five-step plan to help you achieve your goals, these books glow with positivity. While some of them do a great job of bringing the gospel into their optimistic writings, others qualify for the Christian section only marginally, as they, like the books by Word of Faith pastors, focus most heavily on self-improvement and self-empowerment, with scripture or biblical takeaways thrown in as more of an afterthought. Between this category and the last category, you'll find a lot of these books in the Christian section, as well as just in the generic self-help section of Barnes & Noble. This doesn't inherently diminish their value, but it does mean you need to be careful with how much weight you put on them, especially as sources of biblical wisdom. In general, these books are lighthearted and encouraging, so they can act as good pick-me-ups in between deeper or more scholarly readings. Beyond the categories I've listed, there are also a few niche types of books in the Christian section that deserve their own categories. First off, Barnes & Noble has books on the Enneagram. A lot of them. For those of you living under a rock, the Enneagram is a personality theory where everyone falls into one of nine unique personalities. These books are in the Christian section because the theory has its roots in Christian teaching. Since the Enneagram is more popular than air fryers right now, people are cranking out books on it at an impressive rate. Whether you love the Enneagram or hate it, it has a lot of influence in Christian culture today, so if you're looking to read up on it, Barnes & Noble has got you covered. Then in the same vein as the Enneagram is Gary Chapman's Empire of Love Language books. Between couples, singles, men, teens, and children, he's got most of the human race covered at this point, but I wouldn't be surprised if he put out a Love Languages for dogs just to make sure he's got all of his bases covered. Knowing your love language and the love language of those around you is important, so picking up one of these books can be a good idea. Also in the Christian section, you'll find books about fighting racism, books for the political far left, books for the political far right, books about conspiracy theories, books by people who claim to have gone to heaven, and other popular books in the world of reading. So suffice it to say, the Christian section at Barnes & Noble is nothing if not diverse. And with that, I conclude my investigation into the Christian section at Barnes & Noble. Like I said earlier, the rabbit hole goes deeper than just what I discussed, but in general, these are the books to expect. So does Barnes & Noble make for a good place to find Christian books? Can we trust them to steward well the responsibility of selling books that help lead people to Christ? My answer is yes, with an asterisk. If you blindly pick a book off these shelves, there's a very good chance it'll help you grow in your faith in some way. Whether that growth comes from teaching you something new about the church, helping build your trust in God, or just reading other people's testimonies, there's good to be found in them. Even the more misleading books can be edifying if you understand them as examples of how not to act or what not to believe. Sometimes though, that can only be done when reading them alongside someone who's wiser or more mature in their faith than you, which is where the asterisk comes in. No bookstore, or Christian bookstore for that matter, is going to be perfect, but overall the selection of books in the Christian section at Barnes & Noble is solid, so it gets the Josiah stamp of approval. But what are your thoughts? Do you agree with my findings? Do you like shopping at Barnes & Noble? Were you also indoctrinated by Arthur as a kid? Let me know in the comments. Go ahead and absolutely slam dunk the like button if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe because I have more videos just like this one on the way. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you all very much, and I will see you in the next one.